Japanese writer and Kane Prize recipient Leila Abulela writes prose that captures and then lingers on experiences of migration. Homesickness pervades her writing, inviting us to consider what constitutes a home and what one will do to return there, even if only through scent and sound. In Abulela's own words, I write about what I find moving and disturbing. Culture shock or how, again and again, the carpet gets pulled from under our feet. In her short stories, The Ostrich, 1997, The Museum, 2000, and Missing Out, 2010, Abulela makes familiar and demystifies the experiences of Muslim women as they migrate from Sudan to the UK. In fact such, she produces similar work to fellow post-nationalist writers. In her short stories, she lifts the limitations on writing in and about the nation-state by globalizing the African experience, while at the same time individualizing it. Abu Layla's characters long for highly personalized and intimately constructed notions of home. Her stories reflect the general path on which the African short story writer is moving, reaching toward an expression of the African experience that is plural rather than singular, familiar rather than exotic and other, relevant and central rather than token and peripheral. This essay examines the ways in which Abu Layla's female Muslim characters articulate their notions of faith and home as a liberating practice, and, as a result, how Abu Layla participates in a new iteration of the African short story. The short story Missing Out by Layla Abu Layla was published in Granta in 2010 a time when Sudan, the country of origin of the story, was unstable politically, socially and economically. During this period chaos are all over the country and the sky fire red. The civil servants are underpaid and therefore strikes and go slows by the workers are common. It is such factors that drive Layla into writing about a classic situation, that of an immigrant couple, Sudanese in London. Having been born to a Sudanese father, brought up and schooled in Sudan, Layla understands the plight of Africa as a continent and at the same time celebrates and champions for the values that have held the African continent together. By the use of scarce characters, Layla uses a couple, Mady and Samra to represent both sides of African continent, the pros and cons of living in Africa. Mady embraces the new culture while Samra retreats more and more and becomes withdrawn and isolated from the reality of life around her. In this story of love, culture and alienation, Layla still for trading our culture with the Western one but yet retain the pros of our culture. She is not totally opposed to adapting what is good from the own. Culture, missing out, depicts its originality by the fact that author uses religion that is widespread in the country of its origin, Sudan. The author's own experiences, especially while at the university, influenced her writing. She pursued economics at the university, which she found difficult due to high baccalaureate scores and math being a particularly strong subject under the dedicated tutelage of her mother. Other than her personal life and the biographical, which have been major influences and sources. Of inspiration for her work, Abu Layla's literary influences include writers such as Naguib Mahfouz and Tayeb Saleh. She also admires works by Doris Lessing, J.M. Kutsi, Adolf Suayef, Anita Desai, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and Abdul Razak Gurna. Summary Missing Out is an emotional and moving story of love, culture, alienation and a longing for home by one of its characters while the other character blindly sinks into the new culture and hence he is alienated. It's a story of Mady, a young and ambitious Muslim man living in London. It's a wondrous story that moves rather swiftly, giving the readers the characters' conflicts without unnecessarily dwelling too long on their problems. This quick pace helps the author to state, though not explicitly, that the story is not about Mady, but about a sort of young, ambitious Muslim caught between modernity and tradition. Mady is sympathetic and his conflict is a universal one, charmingly rendered. Story revolves around a young man from Sudan who joins college in London. During his first term, Mady writes home citing he would not make it and that he would give up and return. With encouragement from his mother, who strongly believes he can make it. Mady weds Samra as the mother advocates. This is made to make him concentrate more on his studies and deter him from marrying a white and losing taste of his culture the beauty of his country. Samra learns that Mady has religion as he doesn't observe the mandatory prayers and in tries to win him back. Samra is nostalgic and has refused to adapt to new life in London and observes her duties as a Muslim woman. On the other hand, Mady sinks into the new culture and all he sees looking at his origin country, Sudan, is negativity and backwardness. He tries to discourage Samra but she stays aloof and gets excited when it is suggested to her that she was going to spend holiday in Sudan.
Mady later calls home and announces that he desired to remain in London even after his studies. This is ironical as from the beginning he had always expressed attachment to his mother country. The setting of this story shifts from London to Sudan. This could be a deliberate move by the author to compare and contrast life in Sudan and in London. London is depicted as developed politically, socially and economically. Life in London was swift and, interfered, with normal life. Mady argues, here in London praying was distraction, an interruption, P112 London was civilized. Life was easy, Samra wondered how one can buy meat already cut up for her. The author observes, every object she touched was perfect, quality radiated from every little thing. London is so developed that even Samra longed to be ill in order to take medicine which was so seducing. The author says, even the pharmacies were stocked so full of medicine in so many different colors and flavors that she almost longed to ill, place 13. Sudan on the other hand is depicted as underdeveloped. Although life in Sudan is still in rhythmic, many elites like Mady find it raw retrogressive. Unlike in London where begging is illegal, in Sudan beggars are all over. Child labor is a common practice in third world countries as inferred in this story, shooing away the barefoot children who passed by with loaded trays trying to sell her chewing gum, hairpins and matches, P108 for the elites like Mady Sudden by extension African continent is underdeveloped. Mady thought Samra would be grateful to him for rescuing her from the backwardness of Khartoum. Chaos is in the city and strikes by the civil servants prevail. This is the plight of Africa. Change. It is said that change is inevitable. Many traditions of people, particularly Africans change when they go to abroad. This is clearly shown by Mady who abandons his culture e.g. the mandatory Islamic prayers. He says, here in London praying was distraction, an interruption, it is no wonder his mother gets really shocked when she learns about the sudden change of her son. Additionally, he even sees the very fabric of traditions that have held his life together as, backwardness, and retrogressive. It is in that view that Mady thinks that Samra should be grateful for saving her from, the backwardness of Khartoum. Mady was hardworking back in the days. He was brilliant and always came to the top of his class. He even had appeared on a newspaper at 16. In London, Mady loses his hardworking spirit and, in his first term at college in London he complained that studies had become hard. The Plight of Africa Layla Abulayla is concerned about the staggering poverty and underdevelopment in Sudan and the inability of African governments to function at the level they ought to. African has resources but is taken away from the Africans. Sudan is underdeveloped. Children at tender age who ought to be in school or in the streets busy hawking to feed their families, shooing away the barefooted children who passed by with loaded trays trying to sell her chewing gum, page 108. Africa is suffering from civil wars. Sudan is politically unstable, Samra's teacher says, you must be relieved that you are here, all that war and famine back home. Africa suffers from brain drain. Such are the people who appreciate more the Western culture and abandon their own. According to Mighty, African culture is inferior to Western culture. The place of women in the society. This is clearly a patriarchal society that believes in the male over female. It is clear that Mady's mother is left with the responsibility of taking care of her son. Parenting has been left to women. The relationship between Mady and Samra is domineering one. That could be the reason why Mady uses abusive language on his wife. She is not supposed to question her husband's behavioral changes. She is not supposed to question him for not doing his prayers and when she does Mady calls her stupid. Techniques and language use. Narrative voice. The author has employed third-person narrative mode, where every character is referred to by the narrator as, he, she, or, they. This makes it clear that the narrator is an unspecified entity or uninvolved person in the story. This kind of narration brings out the thoughts and intentions of different characters hence their character traits are fully developed. A third-person narrator is omniscient and omnipresent. Such narrator has knowledge of all times, people, places and events and this makes it possible to shift the plot from London to Khartoum, Sudan. Even then the narrator's knowledge is, limited, to the characters, that is, the narrator cannot describe things unknown to the focal character. Local Dialect To keep it original, the author has used local dialect to avoid the story been confused with European literature. Use of local dialect also helps the reader to determine the physical setting of the story. The author has used certain local words among them Toby, Zed and Shala, Ka, Ba and Kibla. Humor. Mady is a humorous character. 
He gets lazy with prayers and says that it's because life in London is swift. He tells Samra not to cover her head because he didn't want to be associated fanatics and backwardness, his culture. It's also humorous that when Mady complains of studies being difficult for him his mother saddles him with a wife. Irony Irony is a strange, funny or sad situation in which things happen in the opposite way to what you would expect. It is ironic that Mady, who does so well in his secondary education certificate, goes to study abroad but complains of studies being hard on him on his first term. There is irony when Mady calls home to complain about studies and his mother instead marries him to Samra. One wonders whether marriage makes studies easy or complicates the state of the learner. It is therefore not a surprise that Mady abandons obligatory prayers completely. It is ironic that Mady expects Samra to show gratitude and appreciation for saving her, the backwardness, of Khartoum but instead she continues to be nostalgic about the same backwardness and eventually travels back home during the holiday. Mady asks Samra to take a leave to Sudan so he can also take a break from her but soon after leaving, he feels hollow and empty. Character and Characterization this story like any other short story uses scarcity of characters and this has given the author the opportunity to explore the characters into details giving us their character traits. Each character plays a significant role that clearly can't be overlooked. Mady. He is loving. He shows love and care to Samra. He shows her around and does everything possible to make her happy and comfortable in her new environment, London. He gives her his attention despite his busy schedule. He is supportive. He supports Samra to settle in her new environment. He buys her a mat to use during her obligatory prayers. He is alienated detached. He is detached from his culture. He blindly copies the Western culture. He abandons the very fabric of his culture that holds him together, the obligatory prayers. It is no wonder that he views the practice of his people back in Khartoum, Sudan as, backwardness. He is abusive. He calls Samra stupid and sees her as retrogressive for observing her obligatory prayers. He is immoral. He sees it as an opportunity to bring other women in his matrimonial bed when Samra travels to Sudan for holiday. Mady represents the elites who go overseas either to study or work there and fail to ever return to their countries. Samra. She is religious. She observes her religious duties in a foreign country and even urges her husband to create time for prayers in her busy schedule. She is resilient. Unlike her husband who is changed by his surrounding, Samra remains as religious as she left Khartoum. She still observes her religious duties despite the fact that life in London is swift. She is naive. Amazed by the kind of development there is in London especially in the field of medicine, Samra is so much seduced by the color and flavor of medicine that she wishes to fall sick that she may use them. She is loving. As a typical African woman, Samra takes care of her husband and it is no wonder he feels hollow and incomplete when she goes back to Sudan for a holiday. She represents Africans who stick to their cultures and admonishes it so much that they actually value it even when in overseas. As a typical African woman, she adores and cherishes her husband. She represents African women who stand up for their marriages and families. Mady's mother. She is caring. She calls her son to check on her. She gets worried when she learns that her son thinks of dropping because studies have become hard and encourages him to work harder. She is generous. When her son does well in examinations back in Khartoum, she throws up a party for him. She invites the villagers to come and celebrate with her. She is selfish. She only thinks of herself and not her son. When he announces that he will stay in London she only complains about her being left alone other than looking at the advantages her son will get. She is hopeful. She hopes that things will not remain dark in Sudan and speaks of a better future. She says, but what if things improve here, son? If they strike oil or make lasting peace. She represents citizens who endure hostility and poor standards of living in their African countries with the hope that things will improve. As a mother, she shows love, care and goodwill to her son. She wishes the very best to him.